so that we can hear from Steve and talk more about PISA and where we go from here after that. Yep. Thank you very much, Sheila. Steve Wilson. Do I have to push a button to get started or? There we go. Okay, so the, maybe. Push right, pushing the right button. There we go. Are standards hard to write? That's the first question I'd like to address. And the, come on, push a button somewhere. Where do I point this thing? Does it matter? No. There we go. Organization of standards in mathematics is actually quite difficult. Categories are very hard to pick if you're going to try to break this up into different groups of material, of content. And the question of how it's done, it's done differently for each of these groups. There's Common Core has 10 content areas. When I say it's well organized, it's just organized. That's all. It's not any better than anybody else's. NAEP has five. Come on. I like the battery's dying here. It can't handle pushing the button twice in a hurry. Tim's. The fourth grade has three content areas and the eighth grade has four. And then when you go to PISA, there's four areas. So I claim that organization is different, but the very fact that everybody does it differently makes it difficult uh, to do it right, whatever that is. But I claim it's also not that important. It doesn't really matter how you organize these things. The structure of standards just doesn't matter that much. So is there anything easy about standards? And what I think is easy is what most people think is hard, namely pushing the button. There we go. I say picking content is easy. All you have to do is involve people who know mathematics. And then you have this problem of, well, what's a mathematician? And everybody has an image of a mathematician, and, <laughs> and the image is wrong. Okay? So what you should think of when you think about what is a mathematician, a mathematician is a 13th grade teacher, because that's what we all do to make a living. You know, nobody's going to support us to do mathematics on its own. We don't have any math majors, so there's nobody in senior classes or junior classes. They're all freshmen. It's 13th grade teaching is what we do. So survey us. Look at our placement test, because we're going to give the placement test no matter what, whether you like it or not. So if you don't teach for it, your students are going to lose, and most of them do. So I claim it's easy here. So let's look at different... Uh, choices of styles for content choices. We have PISA. It's not a math exam, so they don't bother with content. NAEP has content and the kitchen sink. It throws everything in. Common Core focuses on minimal college readiness. And I want to emphasize the minimal there. Tim's actually listens and they do a good job with content. So what else is easy? I think clarity of writing is actually very easy. You use simple, precise, mathematically correct language. And you don't have to put in lots and lots of adjectives and qualifiers. So Tim's, for example, come on. Compare and order whole numbers. Solve problems involving proportions. Compute with fractions and decimals. Solve problems involving percents and proportions. It's very nice, straightforward, clear. It's easy to understand. It's easy to decide what you'd have to teach for someone to be able to take this test. Common Core is a step down. Know when and how to use standard algorithms and perform them flexibly, accurately, and efficiently. So let's clean it up. Know how to use standard algorithms efficiently. Do you really have to mention accurately? I mean, this is a math course. I mean, if you have to tell people that they're supposed to do it accurately, you're already in trouble. <laughs> so, NAEP. NAEP is much further down the food chain here. 
Create and translate between different representations of algebraic expressions, equations, and inequalities, for example, linear, quadratic, exponential, and trigonometric, using symbols, graphs, tables, diagrams, and written descriptions. This is just one of 300 standards in NAEP. So let's analyze this just by counting. And this is one of 300. So it's one standard. Let's forget the create business and just go with the translate. There's three things expressions, there's four function types, there's five things that are represented, and you're going to translate among the five. That's 20 different translations. Come on. There's four different functions, three different mathematical relationships. That's 240 <laughs> things you have to learn in one standard, but I forgot create. Let's go back and do create, add that in there. There's 60, so in that one sentence, there are 300 individual things a student is supposed to learn, and that's a little much for, um, come on, try that, okay, P's, so that, there was another line there that never came up, which is the, no, that doesn't qualify as clarity. <coughs> So PISA is lowest of them all. They have statements like this, elegant computations, recognizing shapes and patterns, representing changes in a comprehensible form, understanding the fundamental types of change. This is not guidance with clarity. So the biggest difficulty, though, is setting priorities. Some parts of standards are not as important as other parts of standards. Some standards aren't as important as other standards. And some content areas aren't as important as other content areas. So recall NAEP. Remember that monstrosity. Okay, you know that if there's 300 things you have to learn here, they're not all of equal importance. So just pick out a couple. Tables to written descriptions are not as important as symbols to graphs. Let's say you wanted to go to college and you were really good at tables to written descriptions. You might have trouble in your math course if you don't know symbols to graphs. Tim, stand, let's compare standards now. Here's one. Compute with fractions and decimals. Use data from experiments to predict the chances of future outcomes. One is essential math, that's the first one, in case there's any ambiguity here. And the other one is pretty important science. In fact, it's almost the definition of science in some circles. So one of them you can get by without if you're going to college, and one you absolutely cannot get by without. Come on. I get extra time as this button doesn't work. Okay, common core areas. So let's look at... the big areas, they do probability and statistics, and their actual standards are perfectly reasonable. They're things you would want students to learn. But 24% of the standards are probability and statistics, and that's not reasonable. Okay, so setting priorities is difficult to fix, actually. And Tim's does it, and the way they do it is they tell you what percentage of their test will be on each area. So there's no ambiguity. Others don't succeed. Even if you pick standards that are absolutely essential, some take more time, and you can't tell by looking at standards what you're supposed to spend your time on. So it's a difficult problem. There we go. Thank you very much.